Right, so the final talk of this session will be deep model-based 6D pose refinement in RGB. And the talk will be presented by... Thank you for the introduction. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fabian, and today I would like to talk about my work, uh, deep model-based 6D, uh, model 6D pose refinement in RGB. We show here how our method performs in practice. On the table, we see the object that we want to register to in 6D, and on the right, in the center of the image, we rendered the card model with the current pose hypothesis, highlighted with the white bounding box. After each reinitialization, our method tries to maximize the overlap between the rendering and the real object in the scene. This process is here visualized with the color of the bounding box. While red illustrates that we are actively registering, the white bounding box depicts that we are reinitializing with a new random pose. As shown in the video, we are trying to register a 6 degree of freedom hypothesis pose with the target pose here depicted in blue and red respectively. Most registration algorithms require either foreground background segmentation or in the case of the well-known ICP, one iteratively establishes correspondences between two point clouds and minimizes an error which in turn optimizes the 60 pose estimate. Although ICP works generally very well, it also exhibits several downsides. First, it requires good initialization to robustly find the optimal pose. Second, outlier detection is crucial for avoiding suboptimal local minima. Third, it requires depth data which is often noisy, missing, or not available at all. Eventually, this brings us to the question, can we learn pose refinement in 6D from RGB data only, which is robust to bad initialization, but still accurate? There are several papers which address the problem of 6D pose refinement or tracking. Here I'm de depicting some of the more recent works. While the first one is an optimization procedure using a color foreground background separation, the other three works are also grounded on, on learning. Similar to us, they all feed a rendering and a scene cutout to a network in order to regress a 60 pose update. Essentially, Deep 60 of Tracking by Gargon et Lalonde is, one of, is the only one that also uses depth besides of RGB to minimize the mean square error in rotation and translation. On the other hand, BB8 by Rad and uh, Le Petit added an optional stage to their detector where they minimized the 3D bounding box projection error. The last one, DBIM, presented here last Tuesday, minimizes the average distance of 3D model points between the prediction and the ground truth pose. Let's quickly discuss the goals of this work. Essentially, we want to do 6D pose refinement in RGB only, which is robust to occlusion, uh, which is robust to bad initialization and clutter, and additionally, we want to be very precise, but also ambiguity-free. In particular, post estimation from RGB data only can be an ill pros problem. As we can see, referring to the yellow cup, different views can lead to the same visual outcome due to symmetries or occlusion. To this end, we propose a new visual proxy loss, which implicitly deals with this problem. Next, I want to describe the network architecture and explain our design choices. So first, we take an RGB input scene, a 60 pose hypothesis and the card model of the object. Then, employing that information, we first render the model and crop patches from the scene and the rendering. We choose a crop size depending on the object's diameter to ensure that the object is always fully visible in the cutouts. Afterwards, we send both patches to a pre trained feature extractor. To this end, we took the first five layers from Inception before, initialized with weights from ImageNet, and froze them during training. Since we train on synthetic data only, freezing the feature extractor was essential to bridge the domain gap between synthetic and real data. Here's an example of a typical training behavior. As we can see, our training accuracy nicely increases during training. And the same also applies to synthetic test data. However, when also plotting the results on real test data, the network completely fails when not freezing the feature extractor. By utilizing weights trained on ImageNet instead, the test curve does not decrease anymore and the method successfully bridges the gap between synthetic and real data. This has also been discussed in Kiel's ICCV 2017 paper and Hinter Stoyser's 2017 archive paper. Essentially, a network purely trained on synthetic images tends to overfit to the perfect low-level features of rendered data. On the contrary, high-level features are less affected by this. So afterwards, we concatenate both patches and feed them into our trainable high-level feature extractor before diverging into two branches to request an update quaternion for a rotation and an update translation vector. 
Now I would like to describe how we train the presented network with our ambiguity free proxy loss. First, we take the model and sample a random post in 6D. Afterwards, we perturb the sample post to get the corresponding hypothesis post for training, thereby Q star and T star related to poses. The most forward approach would be a mean square error for the quaternion and the translation vector in order to optimize the 6D pose. Here, Q delta and T delta describe the request update transformation. However, first overall results highly depends on the balancing factor gamma, and second, the loss is not robust towards ambiguities such as rotational symmetries. In particular, the optimization would converge to some mean of all possible solution, which does not necessarily have to be the correct pose. Therefore, we introduced our new visual proxy loss, which I would like to explain more detail now. In particular, we first rendered a sample hypothesis and target pose. Afterwards, we compute the distance transform of the target pose. In essence, the transform, um, each point on the transform measures its distance to the closest contour point. Thereafter, we sample 2D points on the hypothesis contour, project them back to 3D before applying our request 3D update transformation. Eventually, we project these points onto the distance transform of the target pose and sum up the values. Essentially, we are trying to fit the contour of the hypothesis into the contour of the target. Yet, the two views usually do not depict the same contour. Hence, an update that drives the loss to zero is not necessarily the correct update. To average this effect out, we extended, we extended the loss to a bidirectional version. Therefore, we also sample points from the target and fit them into the distance transform of the hypothesis by applying the same update but in reverse. So far, so good. Let's take a look at our results. Since our framework is a generic registration method, we evaluated in a, it in a tracking scenario and also for the problem of 60 post refinement after initial detection. First, I would like to demonstrate one easy example for tracking. So here on the left, we show the rendered results of the track 60 post. On the right, we illustrate what the network actually sees at each frame. Thereby, while the left patch depicts the cutout of the scene, the right patch illustrates the current post hypothesis. As we can see, after the hypothesis snapped onto the scene, we can continue to easily track the object at a high frame rate of 30 hertz, even under some partial occlusion. In order to further evaluate our results, we utilized three different data sets, in particular Limod on the left, Tijan in the middle, and Joy on the right. We used the first two data sets for evaluating pose refinement after detection and the latter one for the purpose of 60 object tracking. Let's recall, our goals were to only employ RGB data, to be robust towards bad initializations and clutter, to, uh, to achieve high precision, and also very importantly, to be agnostic to ambig ambiguities. I think RGB only can be easily checked, so let's start with robustness. To evaluate this, we conducted an ablation study in which we used the ground truth poses from Limond and perturbed them with increasing decrease of perturbation. As we can see on the top, we achieve overall good performance and can very robustly refine back to a rotational error of not more than 10 degrees. For translation, we found out that as long as there's an overlap of the rendering and the scene cutout, which is usually the case when the perturbation is less than 0.5 of the object's diameter, we can almost always recover robustly back to the correct pose. Interestingly, we did this experiment with different degrees of perturbation during training and found out if we perturb it stronger during training, we are in general more robust but, let, uh, but also less accurate. So to evaluate precision in pose, we initialized the poses with SSD 6D, an RGB object detector, and tried to refine them back. If we take a look uh, at the error for rotation, we see that we could improve the numbers by about more than 10 degrees and also produce better results than 3D point-to-plane ICP. For translation, we could uh, also outperform 3D ICP for the X and Y direction. However, we cannot compete with the results for estimating the depth. When only using RGB, a small deviation in pixel space can lead to a significant difference in depth. For the last point, we employed the Dishani dataset since it possesses, as explained, ambiguous objects for which different views result in the same visual appearance. Looking at the qualitative results, we can see while our method was able to conduct proper post refinement, the naive loss failed due to not understanding ambiguities. We also compared with the tracker from Tjarnedal and Kieletal and found out that we also produced better results as them. 
When we consider the numbers, we get the same results. In particular, our method easily outperforms the related work, and especially the same network naively trained with the mean squared error loss. As earlier mentioned, we also conducted tracking on the JOY dataset employing our method. First, I want to show some qualitative comparison with Tarn et al. The sequences are generally rather simple. However, RGB methods tend to fail easily when occlusion is present. As we see on the right, the method immediately fails when the box is occluded, since it was not able to properly separate the foreground from the background. On the contrary, we were able to nicely track the object without a lot of jitter. Similar results we, see, we also see for the tight object. While we were able to track it, Tian and Al were not capable of it. Checking the numbers, we can report similar uh, results. Uh, essentially, we upper from Tian et al. by a large margin for both translation and notation. In contrast, when also including death best methods, we have mixed results. Concluding, we are indeed able to learn 6D postage farming from RGB data only and get post accuracy comparable to 3D SCP. On top, our loss is parameter free and does not require careful, carefully handling outliers. Finally, we can recover robustly from even very bad initiations. However, this is not, uh, there is no generalization to unseen objects so far. Therefore, similar to DeepIM, we also conducted a class experiment to investigate that direction. To this end, we employed eight cups and mugs, as we can see them on the top for training. Afterwards, we took three unseen cups, shown here on the right, which we track over a longer sequence. While we were able to successfully track all cups over the whole sequence, the poses are still a little bit more jittery and less accurate than usual. We also conducted some tracking experiments with the same setup on synthetic data with similar results. It seems that the network is in, uh, indeed learns to map changes in the projective geometry to proper 60 post updates, even up to categories. Lastly, I want to show a short sequence where we employed our method on a Toyota HSR robot. We run SSD 60 to detect the objects and refine each pose with the presented method. As we can see here, the results are also precise enough for some ro simple robotic manipulation tasks. Finally, I would like to thank my team and Toyota for supporting and funding this work. And please visit us at our poster B4B01. We have time for a question or two. Right, in the meantime, I'll ask a question. So have you looked to see how robust the method is if you have a scene that has many objects with very similar shapes? Uh, so for example, a, a view of a street with lots of cars that are similar to each other. Uh, so um, this is a good question. So when the objects are very similar, of course it leads to some confusion, but as long as the color is a little bit different, it usually, I mean, it also implicitly learns the color and is able to track the objects. If the color and the geometry is similar and they overlap a lot, then this might lead to confusion. Right. Uh, do we have any other questions from the audience? Looks like no. All right, so thank you very much for attending this session, and there'll be one more in the afternoon. Let's thank the speaker again.